I saw a dude. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I don't really have anything to preface this video with, so let's just jump right into it. Becky, Rebecca, Blythnik was a 41-year-old mother of three living in Quincy, Illinois. Becky was an award-winning nurse and had graduated valedictorian from Quincy Notre Dame High School and went to Quincy University. Becky started her career in pharmaceuticals but finished up with nursing school right at the start of the coronavirus, so she definitely was jumping into a field that really needed her at the time. Becky and Tim Blythnik were married in 2009 but had been separated for many years before Becky was found shot to death on February 23rd, 2023 in her own home. Tim, her husband, worked at Quincy Farm Products in business development. The Quincy police chief, Adam Yates, announced that a Quincy man was arrested in connection to Becky's murder. Chief Yates said that the public's help was key for investigators. At 8.24 this morning, Quincy Police Department detectives and members of the department's emergency response team arrested a 39-year-old Timothy W. Blythnik of Quincy for a no-bond warrant on two counts of first-degree murder and home invasion for the murder of Rebecca Blythnik, he said. Tim and Becky were going through a divorce at the time of her murder. However, court documents about their divorce was removed from Illinois' public records website after a judge ordered for them to be sealed, so we cannot look at those records anymore. And we can't learn any, like, information about what was going on, why they were maybe getting divorced, any altercations maybe that had been, like, happened that were a cause of the divorce or a symptom of the divorce. We just don't know. Tim was taken into custody without incident from his home on Kentucky Road where officers had previously served him with a search warrant on March 1st, only 12 days before Becky was murdered. Becky's house was only about a mile away from Tim's, which honestly, if you're two parents and you're still going to be co-parents, it's not a terrible idea, I don't think, to live somewhat close together, just for the kids' sake even. This brutal crime has had the Quincy community on edge and our residents living in fear, Yates said. I hope today's announcement can begin to calm some of those concerns. Prosecutors believe that the murder wasn't random, but an act of domestic violence. According to Tim's lawyer, she had met with him and other family members and had been preparing a series of court filings to protect his interests and preserve his constitutional rights. Tim was being held without bail at the Adams County Jail. Before Becky passed away, she had tried to obtain an order of protection, so like a restraining order, against Tim, and then a while later, Tim filed one against Becky. A little suspicious. Seeking an OP in a, in a divorce is not uncommon gameplay in Adams County, Tim's attorney said. The state's attorney's office needs a narrative. It appears that domestic violence is that narrative. Mmm. I don't know about that home slice. I don't know if it's a narrative or if it's maybe what actually was going down. Becky's family was relieved that Tim had been arrested, saying, While the arrest today provides a step towards closure, this journey is far from over and the investigation continues. Our highest priority remains protecting and loving Becky's sons, who are the light of her life. As we continue mourning, we will love and care for them in the ways we know she would want, the family added. Due to the public's interest in the case, several Quincy media outlets are asking for the court to reverse their blanket order that sealed all motions in the murder case. Both the defense and state argued against unsealing the records and cited that the sealed evidence contains police reports that cannot be released during an active investigation, according to khqa.com. On May 11th, so Thursday, so today when this video comes out, 2023, Tim will appear in court. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't really get to do an outro because there was a phone call that I really needed to take. So, um, so this case, okay, I don't want to sound like totally heartless in saying this, but let's be real. It's not that uncommon to hear a couple going through a divorce and then one of them just like decides to murder the other one, right? So like, what makes this case interesting? Weirdly enough, that can be answered through a family feud segment. So here's that. What's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. Not my mistake. I love my wife. I'm going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, I mean, that was a really weird answer. And then pretty soon your wife turns up dead. So anyways, that is what basically makes this case interesting and one that I think we should keep an eye on and just see what happens. Um, yeah, kind of crazy, right? But very, I'm very interesting. I'm kind of wondering if they're not going to use that clip as evidence in court, maybe? It sounds weird and far-fetched, but trust me, they've used weirder things for evidence before, so... I guess we'll see. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want to leave a comment about your thoughts, you are absolutely free to do so down below. But remember, we are still talking about real people in this case. So just keep that in mind. Keep it respectful, please. I don't want to have to like go through and censor my comments, okay? That's not what I'm about. Let's keep it respectful. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and stay safe. Subscribe to my channel if you want to. But other than that, I will be back tomorrow with another True Crime Courier video. Bye guys.